and the graph has changed. I'm going to add another filter to this table and it will be the, the transaction dates in which the sale occurred. So I'll add a new label and I'd like to see transactions from the beginning of 2004 up to the present day. And I'll double click the table and select edit query again. But before I do that I should put name ranges over the filter areas. So I'll call the name range filter date from and filter date to and then select edit query and I'll add the transaction date to the filter area. You can see over on the right hand side of the filter cell there's a drop down list and it's showing us all the name ranges that are available in the spreadsheet. Of course I could double click the cells or I could select them from the list. In this case filter date from and filter date to from and to I'll just do a preview. Yes, that's working and finish. I've put in the cell the keyword date. Date is a special keyword that's recognized by the the application as being today's date. And this can also accept relative date calculations as well. What I'll do is just type into cell C3, 2003, and you can see that the table and the chart is changing as I type in values. And if I change the color, everything is refreshed. Now, depending on the type of report, you may want to enter the filter values. And when you've finished entering the filter values, click a button and have the report refreshed. If the report is going to take some time to calculate, it's a good idea to not have the report refresh on, on each time the user is changing a value. To achieve this, we can go to the, the menu system again and select edit button table binding. What this will do is put a button on the worksheet so that we can execute the refresh of the report on demand. We currently don't have a button on the worksheet so I'll click the plus symbol to add a button and you can see it's just appeared here and we would like to select a query from the list and at the moment I've only got one query which is the production transaction history query so we'll select that and we'd like the data to appear in cell B5 and the table name will be table which is the name of the table that we currently have. The next thing to do is define the filters that are driving the report and I had three of them. One was the filter color, the date from and the date to. And I'll click OK. For the final step, I should go in and now delete the formula that was above the table. This is no longer required as the button will be refreshing the report. So I'll delete the formula. And I'll now go up and just change the title on the button to. Once a button has been bound to a table, you'll need to use the Query Manager to edit the query. I'll just select from the menu Query Manager and you can see that the query that's driving this report is now 
in the query manager tree structure. And from here I can then edit the query and modify its contents. That concludes a brief overview of using tables in Excel to do reporting.